Welcome to The Uncommon Truth. My name is Max, and I'm here with Stephen Vicky Orsillo, as Hello. always. Welcome. welcome. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome. I mean, last week we <laughs> were, we did our first ever um, socially distant remote. <laughs> remote. It wasn't, it wasn't really socially distant. It was because remote. of fires and stuff, and we yeah. couldn't be in the same place, so we didn't want to leave everybody hanging with all the news of wildfires, and then no podcast comes on Monday, and they That'd get all worried scary. about us, so... We wanted to make sure we we did a little bit of that, so it was it wasn't quite as long as our other episodes, but there's some really good stuff in there. You guys shared. Absolutely, we were in the side of we were in a bunker on the side of a hill, right? Yep. A, we were hermetically sealed in a vault. It was called a dugout. A dugout. We were. We, it was funny because I just listened to the um, I don't know I think it was two weeks ago and. We we're talking about there's no fires in Butte County. Yeah. We were talking about riding bikes, yeah. and I'm like, and Steve said there is no active fires in Butte County. Three days later, evacuation, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we are totally not telling the truth. We're making that up about the dugout. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> yes. I'm out in us. Yeah. You guys were. You guys are at home, right? Just yeah. We were at our house. Out. Yeah. Yeah. We had to get out. We went. Uh, we went up to the hills to the Tahoe area, which had really great, like no smoke that oh, day we were there, but nice. now it's, it's bad. I heard now it's, it's worse it than looks here. pretty crazy. Yeah, it looks like uh, fog on the lake. On, yeah, it's on coming Tahoe. from both sides. Smoke in has risen. Yeah. yeah. So down here in town, it's not so thick, but up, up high, it's sitting in, it's sitting in a layer right about where Tahoe would be. Yeah. And we appreciate everybody who's reached out to us because we have people from all over the world. They, I feel bad every time they open the newspaper. It's like Butte <laughs> County, yeah. Yeah. Oroville. Every, uh, it's yeah. like everybody knows Oroville and the fires and mass destructions. And we appreciate you guys. We, we don't know what Jesus is up to, but he's up to something. Yeah, I do. <laughs> it really helps me because I'm able to tell people, you, you know, <laughs> like used to say when I travel, I'd be like, yeah, it's it's like basically Chico, right? Yeah. Like you've heard of Chico. Yes. OK, cool. Well, that's like I'm just right outside of Chico, basically. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, yeah. now or, now or people Chico are like, Chico, what? That. Oh, that's near Oroville, that place that keeps getting <laughs> like burnt and flooded. And yeah. We have things, switched, right? haven't we? Oroville's so. notorious now. Yeah. Notorious. Mm -hmm. So it's cool. Be, I can I can tell people. And, we know exactly where yeah. you are. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. It's right where the red but flame is. But it's good because I kind of I kind of live. I don't know. I I find myself coming out of my shell a little bit more during those times. Like almost like I I kind of wish I kind of have always thought maybe it would be cool to have been born in a different time that was a little bit more like more was required of us. Like uh -huh. like the Greatest Generation. You know what would I have done? Would I be one of those guys who would volunteer for the paratroopers or something or would i uh now you're you living know. in orville you are you're on the front line yeah <laughs> front <laughs> lines of, of stuff <laughs> um but anyway it was it was interesting and i'm really glad you guys are safe and me too and all homes are accounted for homes and everything so all, all our homes yeah, all our homes, yeah. our homes of properties, people on our church teams. Praise the Lord. definitely people had to stay out longer than others but yes yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It was um, but and you guys so are, many of our people that we know have, have had their houses homes. burned down. Yeah, just yeah. this week. Yeah. And you guys know exactly what they've been through. So that's right. We can feel if their you pain. need if you need to reach out to somebody who Please understands do. you're listening and and you've lost a home or, or anything like that, give us a drop us an email and, and we'll pass on your email to Steve and Vicky. I got my email as always in the bottom of the show notes there. You can give us a shout. We did have some, uh, we had some feedback from a former team member at the father's house, Veronica, Veronica who uh, said three weeks ago she found the Uncommon oh, Truth, awesome. and she is through the first 58 episodes now <laughs> in three weeks. So That's awesome. She says she loves you guys, <laughs> and she, she <laughs> said out. you guys, okay, so for everybody who's just joining Steve and Vicky and you've never, you know, you haven't met them and you don't really know, apparently you guys are exactly the same all these years ago when Veronica was here, she said the banter's the same, the, uh, <laughs> you know, like some of the stories are the same, but she's, uh, she's really excited that she can, she says she feels like home. Aww, so thanks for listening. Past, Veronica. Thanks for listening, Veronica. <laughs> Keep listening. We can't um, change the story. I asked her if there's it's, anything she it's would. It's our lives. I asked her if there's anything she'd change about the the podcast, and she said, "No, just keep going." That's awesome. She loves Thank us. you. Thank you, Veronica. We if love you've you. got anything you're listening to, the Uncommon Truth, and you say, "I'd like to hear something along these lines," a topic you want to hear covered, or you got questions for Steve and Vicky, those can be emailed to me as well. I and have one. What you I, have a I think yeah, no, I have something that Vicky. we have to change. Okay, what do we got? <laughs> Steve said the word poop like five times on the on the two I'm weeks 65, ago. Sixty-five, yeah. He okay. said poop. I don't think we should say that. Okay. Then he said defecate after the fourth time. 
I'm yeah. Hmm. And then you just said it twice. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm making an illustration. Should we start keeping track? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many times? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would win. My point was much better taken using that word. Oh, okay. Yes. I might have to go back and listen to that one. I can't remember the context. Oh so, yeah. But that's all right. Yeah. We Maybe we won't step in that one this time. Oh. Yeah, let's so. avoid. Let's sidestep. <laughs> sidestep the poop. All right. Well, here we go. Now we've now put on your boots. Said it. Here we go. Here we go. Let's so go. I want to I want to talk to you guys this week about sharing our faith. Oh boy. And uh, it's kind of interesting. I think a lot of people, as we we're brainstorming what we talk about with you guys this week. Um, Luke and I, our producer, we were thinking, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have like guilt or or insecurity around talking about their faith or sharing their faith practically. So not just evangelism, but al- actually going out and serving people too in the name of Jesus. And um, and so I w- we wanted to bring that in front of you guys and see, see what you think, what you guys have done. Um, I know the outreach and the 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 way the church works here is one of the big reasons why my family stayed here after we came to one service. Mm-hmm. We really enjoyed it. And we got to see for a week when we came to the Kelly wedding, all the different things that happened just in one week at the father's house. Oh boy. And, uh, and it kind of hooked us in and it planted that seed that we wanted to keep coming back and seeing more. Um, and so I just wanted to get your guys' you know, opinions on that. So when it comes to sharing our faith with those around us, most of us are pretty uncomfortable, right? Um, maybe even we feel guilty because we could have been doing more. Um, or, or maybe we, we just don't know how, right? Um, so where do you think most people are at with this idea of, of sharing our faith? What's, where, where do you think we're at? Um, I think where we are is almost silent sometimes. Um, it's such a hard thing to do um, because the, because we, we're afraid of people, we're afraid to make them feel uncomfortable, we're afraid to bring the truth. Um, you know, I think you live in Jesus is the number one thing. I think there's a there's an old, um, what's the old slogan said, you know, live Jesus in it. And if, preach every day. No. no. And then if... Um, oh, you the gospel, preach the gospel every, every day, day and, and when necessary use, use words. words. That was yeah. it, yeah, yeah. So living the gospel is, is so essential, but you really have to put words to it too. It, mm. And, and I, th- I was listen- listening to it on the way over here, um, a few weeks ago when I, I talked about the name of Jesus, and um, I guess I'm really an evangelist because this has not been that hard for me. I, in fact, I just, I just bought a car, and I was telling the guy, he said, you know, I, I, read, I read Proverbs a day. I said, that is not going to get you saved. Hmm. You need, I love you, but you need, you need to investigate Jesus because I, lo- I love you. I mean, the truth is we have a secret to life and death and we're so silent about it so i think it's it's a, it's coming to a time right now that it's so important in my opinion to sh- share the name of jesus only only if you're living the name of jesus mm, wow do not share the name of jesus if you're secretly sinning and mm-hmm. being a hypocrite please don't do that just don't say anything because wow. it does more damage the hypocrisy of a double life than you know, trying to aim at the, the bullseye of Jesus Christ. I think it's really, 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 really important to right now to to example Jesus and then say the words of Jesus and tell people about Jesus because this life is so evil right now. Mm-hmm. Ryan Kelly last night actually talked about be careful how you walk because the days are evil. Yeah. People are looking for an answer, and the answer is Jesus Christ. It is the answer. It is he's a solution to every Everything. problem. He is, you know, it's not it's not the the ills of society. It's it's Jesus. Jesus will will confound the wise and and make make straight the path and he is the way the truth and the life and no man comes to the father except except through him so i think if i could tell anything to our our listening audience is it's really just try just say you know praise the lord praise Mm -hmm. jesus but get the name of jesus in front of people because they don't really know who to grab onto yeah so my my admonition and of course again i am kind of a um extrovert um outspoken 
Yeah. Evangelist. You're edgy. You bought a Ford Edge. <laughs> I edgy. bought a Ford Pushy Broad. Was, it was pushy broad what you were looking for? Yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah, what but, you were trying to say? but the no truth comment. is a lot of people a lot sure of people what. are saved because I've I've opened my mouth. Would yeah, you agree with that? Absolutely. Push, so push, push, you know, it's right. like I I'm I I'm a salesperson and when I believe in something I can sell it. Yeah. That's and true. I believe in Jesus Christ. And yeah. I can not that I have to sell him, but you do have to open uh, your mouth so people know why you live because you're such a we're such an um, abnormality to so many people, mm-hmm. you know, at the father's house, especially, mm-hmm. especially Steve. He's a real abnormality. He's a real weirdo. Uh, I am definitely an abnormality. <laughs> they want to know why he's so weird. That but anyway, it's Jesus. the truth. So I don't know if I answered the question. Oh, you did, yeah. So it, I, I think it's the, the time is growing short. The days are evil. People need Jesus, and people are dying every minute, every day. And the older we, you get, the more people are going to pass away. And if they don't know the name of Jesus, how can they call out to him? Yeah. And the, and the reason Christians who even, even the Christians that want to share, probably could share, it's, there's a, for, you feel a force against you mm. that makes you reluctant to share. Because so many people, I mean, the, the world projects an anti-Christian Correct. sentiment. There is a, you know, Pressure. even, even Homer Simpson saying, is this going to be about Jesus? You know, like, it's yeah. like, oh, my gosh. Do that again. The knocking at the door and everything. Do that know? again. Is yeah. this going to be about so Jesus? Good. Okay. And, you know, so that's, that, I mean, and they've learned to make jokes in a way that yeah. make you off guard and yeah. on your heels. Yeah. And so everybody is afraid to share. So what they share, what I hear shared most, mostly out there in the world in supermarkets and malls and walk, at gas stations, anywhere out in the world, any, in anything you do. It's usually someone saying a statement that Jesus has their back or, you know, Jesus is their homeboy or, Mm -hmm. you know, praise God when their life doesn't have any. They they don't have the ability to say, I once was going this way and now I'm going that way. He's real. The the one the 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 cardboard testimony where I was a drug addict and now I don't use drugs. I'm saved. I I was I was an alcoholic and I destroyed my family and now I have my family back through Jesus Christ. Those kind of cardboard testimonies that we used to do, you hold them up and people come and share what Jesus has done in their life. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of people out there proclaiming the name of Jesus, they don't have the ability to do that. There's a guy right now going around, I think he's at 26 cities, maybe he's at more, where he's leading these worship sets in the middle of COVID. Sean Fo, I I wouldn't even try to say his name. Foyt. Foyt. Is it Foyt? That's how you say that? that? Foyt. Okay, so um, Bethel. I was watching one this morning thinking, you know, since we can't, since the vast majority of people can't say, um, I am I just, you know, my life is so good. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. Why are you so wonderful? Because Jesus, I found it's Jesus real. in my life. You guys said that and when I called you and you were, yeah. you know, huddling in fear of fire, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, we're doing great. We're, doing, we're great. doing great. And people just... You know, like one guy got mad at me in a supermarket for singing. I, under my breath, I was singing a worship song. And he says, really? That happy? And, and most people can't answer the why. <laughs> yeah. Why are you happy? I said, because I, one day I met Jesus, found out he was real, and he's been in my life, and he's changed me. He's brought joy to my mm-hmm. life. In the midst of hard circumstances, I still have joy. And uh, I'm able to share that, and it's a true testimony. If that man were then to hide behind this the supermarket things and follow me around and leave and follow my car to the gas station and through life peeking from the you know peeking over the corner spying on me or he planted a camera in my car he'd find out that what i told him is true Hmm. i'm not telling him a testimony that isn't true i'm telling him a testimony that is true i found that jesus was real gave my life to him and he has changed my world to where even in the midst of the same struggles you know, I have the same, when I walk uphill, I get tired. When I work, it's hard. When, I, when I'm disappointed, it's, it's disappointing. When I'm hurt, it hurts. And I feel pain, and yet I have a joy in my heart, and I'm able to navigate the world, and I'm able to, I'm able to explain for my own self the universe, really. And people can't do that. People can't testify yeah. because we're not teaching them to testify. People aren't saying it anymore, even in church. Oh, I'm awesome. Even in church, people are trying to share victim stories. Yeah. Oh, it's been going rough. I've that's had a rough. That's how our culture communicates yeah. now. I spent yeah. the weekend with a guy who's, oh, I've had a rough two years. You know, look, well, were you walking with Jesus? Were you forgiven of your sins? Can you imagine you were forgiven of your sins? Doesn't that make you happy all by itself? Hmm. 
that the mistakes you made aren't going to condemn you, that you won't be judged for them, that, he, that as long as you're aiming your for the mark. Your written in the book yeah, of life. Yeah, that you, yeah, don't rejoice about all whether or not you make money or not. Rejoice that your name's in the book of life whether you make money or not. I remember one time someone asked me, and, I, and I just, it just came out of me. I said, are you kidding me? I'm doing awesome. I have a Father in heaven that loves me. And loves me so much, he made a way for me to spend eternity with him. He said, i got to make a plan for Steve to be with me forever. And he made a plan for me, became flesh and dwelt among us and died for us. And, I mean, this is easy. <laughs> You're so excited. This is easy. But awesome. the world has this incredible pressure, and they don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. And even I, with my incredible testimony, I have a terrible time bringing it up anymore you know like hey isn't this beautiful like we're out the, we're, you're at some overlook in the cars and everyone's standing around isn't this awesome and and someone says oh it is you say can you believe god loves us so much to give us stuff like this on earth for us to look at and usually that starts a conversation in the past yeah. but today they're booking for their car man they're trying mm -hmm. to get in the car as fast as they can they don't want to hear a story about god and if they would stay they would hear a story about god in my life and i think that's really what's lacking in evangelism Vicky can tell people about her life. And if they spied on her, they'd find out it's true. Yeah. And if they if they followed us, we can tell them what well, the Bible says. She's usually says. inviting them to come yeah. come over anyway. <laughs> so. And I think that come to church is probably that's why it's so hard today. I think we have made come to church the evangelistic thing. Yeah. Let the pastor lead them to Jesus. Because no one wants to take personal responsibility for their own testimony. Do you have a Christianity that works? Then you Follow have a testimony. Me. Yeah. If your Christianity is hard, you know, because Christianity is not for wimps. It, it, there's disappointments and difficulties in your life, and yet you have Jesus in your heart, and you have joy in your soul. Do you not have a testimony to share with them that the realness of the love of God? And then what's the difference between you and everyone else? You know, I all, you know, one guy said, I feel so bad for you. I was buying a trailer from him. He says, I feel so bad for you. And I said, what? You feel bad for me? I was thinking because my house burned down, right? Because mm -hmm. I bought the trailer because I had to live in something after my house burned down. <laughs> yeah. So I was down in Rockland trying to buy a trailer to, to, for us to live in. And, and he, he, I feel so bad for you. And I'm like, oh, it's not, the fire isn't that big a deal. Yeah. You know, it's just an adventure for our lives. I was going to try to answer that way, but that wasn't what he was talking about. He said, oh, just all you pastors. I mean, you seem like a really real guy, but, uh, you know, so many of your colleagues are just in it for the money. And I don't understand that. <laughs> And I looked at him like, what are you talking about? He says, you know, all the pastors are all just stealing the money from the oh, church and, so you know, getting people to give them all their money. And mm -hmm. it's all it's all it's what all about. And if you're real, you're like, you must be awfully lonely. And I said, dude, the, in my town, any pastor that's in it for the money, they chose they're the wrong. Smart. Yeah, they're not very smart. And they chose <laughs> the wrong the location door. because yeah. that is, money is not flowing into pastor's <laughs> pants, man. This is not flowing into their bank accounts. It's their sacrifice. And I said, I don't, you know, the truth is I know lots and lots and lots of pastors, but I don't know very many that are there for the money. Mm -hmm. And most of them give, are, are the biggest givers in their church, you know. And so um, it's just such a, there's such a, you can't even talk about Jesus. They just want to talk about the money or the sexual perversions of people that claim hypocrisy. Jesus and the hypocrisy. And, 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 and that's what they want to talk about. So that's, right. that's why evangelism and sharing your faith is so hard. There's this pressure. And so, I challenge everyone listening and us, all of us, even me, because on a daily basis, this pressure wins one day. I, I'll run from an opportunity because everybody, you know, they just reject it. Whereas in the past, man, I was hitchhiking to get in their car mm -hmm. to just blast them with Jesus. And today uh, there's a pressure. I feel it. I don't want to do it. And I think the challenge for all of us is, is to look at our hearts and what's our testimony. If you've been a sad Christian for 20 years and for the last year you've been a happy Christian, you talk about that last year. You say, man, I, am, I walk every day now filled with the love of God and the joy of, joy of the Lord. And have an answer for everyone yeah. who asks. And I'm thinking, about, I'm thinking about when I first started out, and um, I remember reading this scripture about Jesus' word does not come back void. Mm -hmm. And due season it will produce a um, harvest. A harvest. And I th I've seen that. I mean, I think you have to get the name of Jesus out so people can have something when it's ready. Because I believe his word gets planted into your spirit and everybody has a God-shaped hole. So if they don't know it's the name of Jesus, 
what are they going to cling to when they when the rain falls because the rain will fall on the just and the ju- unjust and the and the wind will beat against your house so i think for me i've always wanted to get the name of jesus out mm-hmm. so people 50 years from now you know we'll say that I, you know what she said i could know him in 20 seconds so i'm i you know I, i've tried everything else i'm not happy but i should just try jesus yeah. and that's what i actually tell that's actually what i tell people after you've tried everything else and you're not happy why don't you try jesus mm-hmm. you know and they kind of look at me and and i just from the beginning of my my christianity i guess i've been an evangelist with my life and with my words i've never really been ashamed of his name i don't think for the most part i actually got, even got i had some um leadership come to me and tell me that you know i'm worshiping too loud or i'm i'm talking i remember <laughs> being when i first was saved um one of the leaders at the at the photography department said you know you're leading more people you're leading more people away from jesus and you are towards jesus you're turning more people off yes and, and that was really hard because i was i mean i a whole you were just talking to everybody about everybody jesus and, the and the oh, dark yeah. the dark rooms i was evangelizing the dark I rooms. i ran at, to her rescue on that yeah one. yeah he did and, but you know i so many people were saved because of those days mm-hmm. back then in the dark rooms and this guy was a well-meaning Christian. He meant well. He, he was just wrong. He, and another thing we do to people, and I, I, I think I need to bring this up, is that when you're first saved and you're brightly converted, well-meaning Christians, again, will say to you, enjoy the new, um, the yep. new born again experience. Enjoy the excitement because it's not going to last. It's going to fade. That's a lie. Yeah. That's a lie. It's like, it's, it, 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 why do we tell people that? Well, it reminds me of when I got, I was getting married and I had some, some people say like, oh, well, you won't be able to do all these fun things anymore and now all they're this. they're married. And, and talking down, I started noticing uh, like commercials on sporting events or stuff where it, it depicts marriage as like this this bad thing. And Ball I was like, and chain. you know what? I've been looking forward to getting married since I can remember. And uh, I feel like when I did get married, it was just like, it was like this, a part of me that I didn't know existed just came, yeah. came together. Completed and it was, you. It was great. And yeah. I even think in like a just in a physical normal world sort of sense i look at my wife and say like i get to be married to her i get to, she gets to be the mom of my kids and mm-hmm. you know like when when we think about uh, our relationship with jesus that way and like i get to i, I get, get to, to have be. a relationship with you and i don't think yeah. i don't think i have ever lost the born the newness born again love because he, he talks about that mm-hmm. if you've lost your first love i will spit you out of my mouth yeah so Not I mean, good. so the new born again experience when someone just you know we're we're experiencing that right now. People are being born again, brightly converted. We need to be really careful not to say, "Well, enjoy." You know, it's going to mm-hmm. go away because everybody I prayed for when I first was, was saved, I felt I I I think they got healed. And can imagine if I still maintain that innocence of of believing that mm-hmm. and belief. Yeah, and faith. you know, I don't want to, my love to grow lukewarm yeah. yeah i i love jesus and i think he's the best kept secret in the world isn't it almost like when when you're working and there's somebody working harder than you you kind of tell them like you know you don't really have slow to slow down that hard you're making the rest of you us work for the county so great that literally <laughs> happens everywhere yeah but uh, in in christianity it happens too right oh where, yeah where oh, somebody's yeah. just like well i mean i gotta go there's this opportunity over here and i gotta go make yeah. the most of it and and i don't know when it's gonna come again and the rest of us are like well I kind of want to watch football, yep. <laughs> you know, like yep. d- maybe, maybe we can do that another time. That actually happens at the father's house a lot where, um, other people will say, you know, they work on you so hard, you work for sal- your salvation. And, and my, my answer is also often, um, do I look burnt out? You yeah. know, if I've been working, you know, so for 21 years we've done the father's house. Do we look burnt out? We yeah. get tired, but yeah. I mean, if I just working my way to heaven, I, I'm, I'm in trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that gets, gets me to motivation, right? So we, we talk about, our motivation for sharing with people, but I wonder if we actually think and believe what the Bible has to say about why we should be sharing Jesus with people, right? What do you think? Do we understand what our motivations, like what the stakes are for no. sharing the gospel with people? Are we talking about the salvation of from heaven, yeah. heaven or hell? Yeah. So, so that is, I think, completely off the table now. I just had a, a Christian leader talking about their daughter is um, huh. saved but doesn't know. Isn't know, living uh, for Jesus. Yeah, isn't living for Jesus. Mm. It's like, well, how does that work? She's living with her um, boyfriend. And so it's 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 so much worse than living with her boyfriend. It's it's public debauchery, right? Mm-hmm. So um, 
on on the internet advertising for yeah. this crazy stuff and parents who you know like this person's a leader in the church and their children don't love jesus and um they they have they they try to come up with these philosophies to ease their pain that their children wouldn't go to heaven yeah but their philosophy won't get their kid to heaven mm -hmm. it, it has to be the truth and if what they've read is the truth then we're wrong but we don't believe you can't he can be so savior if he's not lord and so the motivation has to be we got to cross the finish line if, the, if jesus said 13 or more times endure to the end persevere to the end overcomes that person will be saved he mm -hmm. who overcomes will be saved he who perseveres to the end will be saved any branch in me that does not bear fruit be cut off and all of the parables that cut off the believer the sheeps and the goats gathered and the, the ones who did not serve uh, are goats and they're sent away i mean all of these things all millions i mean there's so many parables about this and that tell you that you have to run your race to the end. Paul said anyone who doesn't run their race to the end cannot expect to receive the prize. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so clear. It's like, it's it's crystal clear. And also the and, parables of the seed, too. Yeah, the, all of them. I mean, there's so many parables that yeah. say the seed grew up and died and withered and was great for a while, but withered and died. And and then there's examples of actual leaders in the church like Demas who went back to the world, mm -hmm. pray for his soul. Why pray for his soul? Yeah. Then it's the good. kid in the church who's kicked out, turned over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh. Yeah. So that on the day of Pente on the day of uh, resurrection or the day of judgment, he may understand and be saved. Because if I let him stay with me thinking he's saved, he'll never be yeah. saved. So you know, good. I saw I saw a meme. So this, good. I don't know. Maybe you saw this. It was a meme of somebody. Uh, they're drowning and they got one hand out of the water and they're reaching up. And then the next it's four four pictures. Maybe I'll, I'll post it somewhere. But. The next picture is a guy coming down to reach his hand to grab the, the drowning man's hand. And instead of grasping onto the hand and pulling him out of the water, he just high fives him. And then the next <laughs> the next picture is the, there's good. no hands, right? The guy's yeah. underwater. And it him. says, uh, this is what this is what tell, uh, not telling somebody about their sin wow. does to somebody who, who so needs good. to know. Right. Yeah. An, an affirming lifestyle, I guess. Wow. You know, little literal standard for us and our motivation should be that it says if you see your brother and it's your brother going headed towards a ditch and you don't tell him that if he falls in the ditch, his blood is on you. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand why that standard isn't a motivation. If I say I love these people, I got to tell them the truth, even if they don't like me for I it, even you. if they hate mm -hmm. me for it. But then if you take it to evangelism where I already talked about the pressure, the pressure is going to allow me or, or cause me to allow you to go to hell or to be judged, or to not even get to heaven. The pressure is doing that to us. And I think that even though not everyone should evangelize because their life isn't in line, if you feel your life is in line, you should evangelize, and you should do it regularly, but learn to do it in a strategy that gets past their, their veil, their, 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 their defenses, yeah. their, their barricade they put up. Because, I mean, honestly, you say Jesus and everyone scatters. Mm -hmm. You say church and everyone runs because they we have had they have had so much of this shoved at them so much of it and i know that for me as a kid i didn't want to hear about jesus man i you you mentioned jesus i threatened to hit you in the mouth and that was in the 70s right yeah. um because so many christian people were not real they didn't believe what they said they believed uh, on you know my my family so adamantly one way but as soon as the service was over and you go back to the house Everybody just goes into flat out debauchery mode, screaming, cussing, telling horribly terrible Drinking. jokes. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no difference between them and the world. And I would I would read the Gospels when I was a kid. They would show these uh, readings from the Gospels. And it's like this. This these stories are amazing. You know, go and sin no more. Well, no one in my family believed mm -hmm. if, if if acting upon what he says is believing. Even as a kid, I knew that and nobody acted upon it. They were very selfish. They were seldom generous. They had all of the stop gaps of that miserable homeless guy or that boat. We, we, we had hobos. You know, today they call them homeless. Mm -hmm. We had hobos from World War II. 
and Korea that rode the trains. You would sit at a train and count 110 hobos on the train. Men were constantly riding the train. They were hanging all over it. Mm -hmm. And I lived in a railroad town. And you'd, every time you'd get stuck by the train constantly. And they would go by and, you'd, and we just, for us kids, would count hobos. Mm. And so when, so, so there was always hobos on the track. They were always walking the length of the track from town to town, right? And they always had a, yeah. a, a bag. Sack. Yep. Well, no one in my family ever were good to them. Mm -hmm. It wasn't treat the hobos nice. It wasn't the pain they went through in war. Or the you know very few left over from the depression by then, but the 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 war the war mental wounded from the war mm -hmm. were all over the country, and I didn't see any ministry to them, and I, I think that my generation grew to hate it. We just don't tell us about Jesus. Don't tell us about Christian. Oh, forget this church because we haven't seen you. We haven't seen it. you live it out. Yeah. So I think that for instance, we've been in Oroville here a long time. We've had a church for twenty two years. 22 years and it, sometimes you think what takes so long to get our message we're talking jesus we're talking look how much joy we have look how much generosity we live in and and we give we want to be the biggest givers we don't want to be takers we want to be givers mm -hmm. we want to be servants of god we want to be seen handling the word of truth and generosity correctly and 20 we've been here 22 years doing that and we have a there's an awful lot of people that would listen to us because of our credibility because we live it and i don't want to break that credibility yeah, i don't want to hurt good. it i want to make sure that my life adds up and when someone asks me and they don't very often but sometimes when they do or i push it cause them to ask me or mm -hmm. i just don't even wait for them to ask me but tell it i want to make sure the testimony i'm telling about what jesus means to me what jesus has done in my life what I, why I do what I do, you know, like, why do you, why do you do this? I do get asked why you do this all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm, 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 I got a fast answer about the love of Jesus in my life and how good he is to me. And he could be that good to you. Mm -hmm. If you ever wanted to know, come see me. Yeah. I got a guy right now going through hell who goes to, he goes to church, but he, he doesn't have any fruit of his life uh, for the Christianity in his life. And so I, I tell him constantly, I hug him. And you could just tell he's about to die when I hug him. But I hug him and pray the Holy Spirit on him, and I can feel the Holy Spirit, and I feel him shudder, and I know he's feeling something when I'm praying for him. I mean, you mm -hmm. can see a tear coming out of his eye. Eventually, his his brick of a heart is going to start to melt into something softer. Yeah. I think also, too, you know, I think I was thinking about you and riding the, your bikes with some people who are not Christians, and lifestyle evangelism putting yourself in places where you're not surrounded only by christians mm -hmm. and a lot of times we do that because it's easier it's it's yeah. the jesus we live bubble. in the bubble yep. you live in a bubble but getting outside you know we have uh, mommy's groups now that um actually has caused a lot of people to get saved or come to church or yeah. you know um the guy like i said the guy that you started um running with you know yeah, the, riding the, bikes riding bike he loves he yeah. loves the father's house he's you know he's there, in. Last, he, night. He's there mm -hmm. last night just got married so i think i think we should not shy away from uh non-christians they yeah. don't have the plague they are not you know they're not going to dirty you mm -hmm. you know that's where jesus would be is with people who are unsaved yeah. so lifestyle evangelism is really you know go go join a bowling league There'd be probably oh, I'm a lot. down. Yeah, let's, let's go. It. You know, just that's and that's I think I think so. I would just encourage people that are listening, look around, mm -hmm. do something that is not Christian in nature, and yeah. because you we always want them to join us, but how about you join them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I so one thing I noticed because um, I used to be of that camp where it's like, okay, well, if you want to tell somebody about Jesus and you don't know how, just invite them to church, right. and and we'll take care of the rest. Right. And I did that a few times when I was younger because I didn't know, I didn't really know how to how to get somebody to like. Well, if you want to know what this is all about, come to church with me. And uh, and they, you know, maybe they liked some of the music or they found some of the points interesting, but it wasn't really a game changer for them because uh, myself and a lot of the other people that brought them to church and hung out with them, we weren't always the, the like More a different coming. person, right? Yeah. We, right? It was kind of like, all right, well, we go to church and that's. That's how they see our Christianity. Um, but one thing that changed when I came here was that um, I would invite people into something different. Yeah. Right? And that's what we noticed. There was something different. It took one service for us to notice that there was something wow. different. Right. There was, uh, from, from the music, it wasn't, it wasn't just music that you'd like to hear, but it actually felt powerful. Right. To the people, you know, like 
can't get to your seat without being greeted five times by people. <laughs> and you can tell when people are just, you know, like, well, I'm expected to say hi to you. Yeah. Um, or when people actually want to know who you are and, and what your name is and they, they invite you th to things, right? And then to the sermon, which was really powerful and it pulled no punches. And I was like, okay, well, this is, this is what I've been missing. And it turned into something that where I didn't, I met somebody on the mountain bike trail and I just gave him a ride to the mount, the bike shop because he had a busted chain and he couldn't ride his bike anymore. And uh, he noticed the sticker that we have on the back of our car. Amazing. And he said, oh, I've been looking for a church. And I had failed the test, right? I had failed the <laughs> test of saying anything. I had the guy in a car for mm. 10 minutes and I had just, I had succumbed to the pressure. But thankfully, yeah. Jesus prompted him to see, it doesn't say the Father's house church on the back. It just says the Father's house, right? And he said, oh, is that a church? I've been wow. looking for one. I just moved to town. Wow. And, uh, and wow. I don't think he's missed a service. No, uh, no except for his honeymoon. And he's yeah. been, you know, like texting you. me, hey, when, when are we going to hang out next? When so are we going to, cool. when is, is there another, he went on the men's retreat. I wasn't yeah. able to come to the men's retreat. I was out of town. And he was like, I'm going to go to that thing. I'm going to go cam camping. And he, yep. he brought his bike and. You know, so he says yes. Last night he said, "I have now have sixty new friends. I went, I went camping with sixty of my friends, and you know, <laughs> it is just, just, and that's lifestyle evangelism. Mm -hmm. You know, and you said you failed the test. I mean, but you failed the first one. But, Thankfully, but, but, the Lord gave yeah. me a second shot. And it propels you, doesn't it? It propels yeah. you. Sometimes people just fall on their sword right in front of you. <laughs> I know they get saved on <laughs> their do. own. Oh, they get saved <laughs> in spite of you. I they know. come to the Lord in spite of you. <laughs> in spite like, of and, us. And I like that, you know. <laughs> but a lot honestly, of that. I don't think that's the plan. I think Vicky's yeah. original comments about don't share until you have a testimony until your yep. life's in order mm -hmm. not just a story not just a, a made-up story but a real joy in your heart fruit of the spirit peace and patience and mm -hmm. kindness operating inside of you in the midst of turmoil even yeah good or bad you know just operating inside of you, you have a knowledge that god has saved you and that he has something good for them then we need to share mm -hmm. a person who shares this life is out of order is, is like a a one-legged soccer player or a one-armed archer that mm -hmm. just doesn't work yeah it's just no good and um you, you pick up something else you know do something else testify about something else but a person who comes to jesus and surrenders to his word and obeys his commands to love forgive judge not mm -hmm. you know lay your life down the person who does that needs to be every day waking up saying Lord, whatever opportunities there are to share your love, I pray that you bring them to me. I'm no good at it, but if you bring them to me, I'll do my best. And if you fail today, wake up tomorrow and say, Lord, whatever opportunities there are today to share your love, I pray that you'd bring them to me and I pray that you'd help me live up to that responsibility. Yeah. And if you fail again, you wake up the next day. And you just keep going until you start to see God moving people for you to just give small one sentence, two sentence. They'll come to your car and say, what's the father's house? You know, that kind yeah. of thing. They'll, they'll, they'll fall on their sword in front of you if, if that's your purpose in life. And go home at night saying their testimony. I shared with someone today. I mean, people are intimidated by you if you start to share Jesus. Um, I'm not talking about the people you're sharing it to. I'm talking about the people who hear that you're doing it. Yeah. It bothers them for some reason. I mean, I've had people just go off on me because they say, do you know how that makes us feel? <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't understand That's why I, I should worry yeah. about well, my evangelism makes you feel. And other Christians, when you're evangelizing, that's what I'm talking about. My oh. evangelism. Yeah, that's, okay. the, that's what yeah. we were talking about sharing. before. You, yeah. You're working too hard. Yeah. yeah. Making yeah. me look bad. That's what yeah. I thought of when you said that. I remember, I, I mean, every week I would go to these Bible studies and share about all the people that prayed with me on the side of the road or, you know, the situations about, mm -hmm. you know, a guy picking me up, hitchhiking, his truck broke down. I helped him rattle can paint his truck on the side of the highway and I led him to Jesus right there. Took him to an evangelist that night. And I mean, he joined a church in that town. And um, I left. And they just thought, do you know what that makes us feel like? Every week you come here with all these stories. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, just be glad. I said, I just feel terrible for you. <laughs> what I suggest is not getting me to stop doing it or stop testifying, because everyone needs to hear what I'm saying. But just start trying, just baby steps. Just, mm -hmm. just ask God to help you share. Bring you to those circumstances where you can tell what God has done for you. I mean, a demoniac whose demons entered 2,000 pigs. Was it 2,000? Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Entered 2,000 pigs. Ten minutes later, said Jesus says, stay here and tell all your countrymen what I've done for you. Yeah. 
That's, I mean, this is what Jesus wants us to do. If we're not getting in the boat to be one of the 12, which it's too late for us now, if we're not doing that, then we're mm. supposed to stay where we are, go where he sends us, come where he calls us, and share the good things that Jesus has done for yeah. us, especially if the demons have left us and gone off. Amen. Holy moly. I am um, practically, I was thinking for me, um, a practical way for listeners, everybody listening can do this. Um, every person that's before you, every person at the supermarket, every person that waits on you at a table or at a, at a, a, a department store, they have name tags. Mm-hmm. Call them their name and, and be nice. Say, you know, hey, um, Steve, I, thank you so much, Steve. I really appreciate you that. Yeah. People, it's just a small thing that we can do to humanize people and make them feel better about their yeah. life. And then thank you so much. You, you say their name again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have done that for years. Um, and, you know, the waitress that comes to my table, I always ask her name. You know, how you doing today, Lisa? You know, um, and then you, you, could, you could see small little baby steps you could do to actually help yourself um, feel like you're moving in that direction and and it, it's kind of like getting out of the boat a little bit yeah. another thing is what we've done is on a toll booth we sometimes pay for the person behind us mm-hmm. just it's a five dollar investment you just it's just delightful you just yeah. you just get so giddy but um the practical but just every person i would i would um exhort each one of you that's listening the next person that serves you at papa murphy's or cole's department store call them their name or ask them their name and just engage with them yeah they're not there to serve you you're not you know it's like you, it's because there is a service involved and i think you're going to see you're, you're just going to open up dialogue yeah my my friend uh, my roommate in college i noticed he would do something every time we do go anywhere he'd he'd before you know we'd go through lots of drive throughs and they'd say welcome to taco bell and he'd say hey how are you that's right and they're like what what do you what, well i'm i'm good but don't you want yeah tacos. just how are you doing okay good or if you're doing good i want some tacos cool yeah. right and it it just changes the atmosphere, Change right the atmosphere. Away. and if you go to like i go to some places all the time like they know me at starbucks because i'm like they a little bit starbucks, of a coffee yeah. coffee guy right can you get you can't sit inside again can i you? can't sit inside okay. right now but um you go they still know me right and they built a second and it's funny you. because i i share the starbucks account with my wife so they don't actually know they at first they don't know my name because i scan my phone and they're like uh order for sharia <laughs> and then, then this bald guy comes and takes his coffee right and it's me and um I'm sharia. yeah and i'm like i get to explain now i share the card with my wife so she can get a cool mug every once in a while with the points but um they get to know me and they get to know what what brings you in? It seems like you bring a Bible with you every morning, right? Like, wh- why do you do that? And um, and I, I just did that when I, my best memory of this was when I was in college. After I, I graduated from college and I just had this, this job, I needed to make some money while I was volunteering with the Navigators Ministry. And so I delivered chicken uh, sandwiches, chicken sandwiches too, but sandwiches. <laughs> And there were two guys. I would I would get a coffee at Starbucks, and I'd bring it to Jimmy John sandwiches half an hour before my shift. And I would just sit there because it was quiet, and I'd read my Bible and drink my coffee. And uh, so they would they would ask me about things because they didn't know any Christians. And so they'd ask me about random things that they'd think, well, I don't know anything about Christianity. Uh, I remember they were into this uh, this show about the uh, like after death experiences, and they're like what do you think about that? It's like, really good. You know, and I got to give them a perspective. Like, well, have you ever thought about what might happen after you die? You're and really an evangelist, aren't you? I think, I mean, I think I am. I, I did that at, at the camp. I and think it's you easier are. with kids because you don't feel judged with yeah. kids, right? Yeah. It's a, a little bit harder with adults. But basically, I mean, they got to see me every day and they got to start asking me some questions. Because they feel safe. Finally, I just, the Lord led me to buy them Bibles. He, he had to pull my... I think I've told that story, but he had to pull my pull me along a little bit, and I bought them. Yank your chain. He just yeah. yanked, he just yanked your chain. So he uh, he got me to buy them Bibles, and I I did, and they said, "Wow, you know what? That was the only present we got this Christmas, either of us." Wow. So uh, maybe that's a sign. Can we start reading it with wow. you? And uh, a month later, they accepted Jesus with me, and it was the same as yours. I had to go. I moved to Canada a month later. But, uh, Have you got a hold of him? Get, get I, him the it's podcast. been a few years. Probably should get a hold of him years. and get, let him hear you on the podcast. Exactly. You know? And you then know. we can shout out to them. It, well, I know their names, uh, Andy and Tuna. So that's Jimmy what you John's need to do. Daily, is Colorado. Now you need to, <laughs> now you need to let them know and really? say, hey, we talked about you yeah. on The Uncommon Truth. That'd be pretty cool. Right. That would yeah. be cool. That'd be cool. So anyway, that's, that's just a little bit of 
I, I think the practical stuff will be really helpful for yeah. some people. Is there anything else you, you wanted to add there, Steve? I think where Steve and I are real dif- different. I think when he, we first got together, he was real an evangelist. And then he kinda, it kind of it kinda, it kinda fell off a little bit when we got to California. Well, your evangelist, because no, you're honestly, out I led people to Jesus everywhere, and then I got to Oroville, and it just and it was stopped. Just, it was like the, this mm. present darkness at the time. I, it was walked into the city, and people quit having an experience. I, I led a lot of people to pray with me. I feel like now we're getting back to that. And in, it in feels Oroville. like it's trickling back it's in. Trickling I was back. sharing that with yeah. some pastors I've yeah. talked to lately on the phone that all of a sudden it's starting to happen again. Yeah. Where people actually are born again from a 20-second prayer, and I, it's like, that's oh, Lord, that's what I want. Please yeah. increase. And so I pray every day, increase your spirit. We're actually increase this more anointing, that. Lord. This is what we want here is, um, you know, I'm not looking for, I'm not looking for raising the dead today. I'm looking for born-again experiences. And I'm happy with raising the dead, but that's not what I'm seeking. I'm seeking the souls saved, souls that forgiven and and I, I really am an evangelist, but it's just been so we're, long. We're different, though. The way yeah. we, the way we approach is what That's I was going right. to say. We're entirely different. Right. And you know, like you won't probably lead someone at the Olive Garden, where you know, at the Olive Garden restaurant, as much as you would be more one-on-one or yeah. relational or, or from the front. Mm-hmm. But we are seeing that the Holy Spirit's really um, open your mouth. I guess is what my just yeah. open your mouth. Talk I about Jesus. I think that if if the Holy Spirit was moving the way it was was in the Jesus moving on yeah. all the way to 1990 for me. Um, I would definitely, I talk to anyone anywhere, cash yeah. registers anywhere. Mm-hmm. And when it's not moving, I'm extremely shy. My yeah. whole standoffish, introverted thing just all kicks Correct. in. And that pressure yeah. that we started with completely, it, it folds my box in. I mean, yeah, you know, you puts quiet. my lids down on my box. I mm-hmm. mean, I, I'm, I'm like the turtle with the head. I'm back in the shell. Yeah, yeah. I pull back. That's what I'm saying <laughs> and, is and that, I, I, that doesn't don't. stop me. And you don't yeah. at all. Yeah, that's, that's all I was trying to say. Yeah, right. We prayed with a girl in um, Olive Garden in Reno. Reno recently, and she was coming to Chico regularly, and we invited her, you know, and she, she had an experience. She had an experience. And she, uh, I mean, just more and more, you know. It's opening up. It's opening up. We feel this crack happening because yeah. what we want in this world and what everyone listening should want is that that movement where people are open and Absolutely. they are confessing their sins, being forgiven, and finding out that God is real in the name of Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. that the Holy Spirit wants to live in them, that's right. make it at home in Him. And that's really... That uh, you can you can live you can work with that. Take that mm-hmm. to the bank. That'll grow churches, countries, families, right. lives. It'll 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 cause rocks to be under your feet and forest fires and and hurricanes in Florida and and fires you know, or floods in Houston. None of those things They're will be able to deter way. you. Death <laughs> will not scare you. Won't have the sting, your sting that it used to have. You know, it, there'll be joy in the midst of the storm. There'll be peace. You'll sleep in the storm. All the promises, all the examples of Jesus. It's going to be good. That's all right. Good. That's good. So everybody's got their homework. Yeah. Go, go out to eat, whether you got indoor dining yep. or not right now. <laughs> but whoever you meet, uh, whether it's the person at Sonic or the Canadians listening who yep. have people, still have people or pumping their church. gas. Right? Even if you just talk about how good life is. Yeah. Yeah. You, they'll say, yep. how are you folks doing? You just talk about it. Life is really good. I yeah. mean, we have troubles, but we have such peace in our heart. Yep. Oh, why? So your your homework assignment is, hey, look on the bright side. Look Absolutely. what Jesus has done yeah. for you. And, and Vicky's homework, homework assignment is humanize the person you're talking to. Yeah. Use their name. and uh, Have a testimony. Yeah. yeah. Get Jesus in there every now and then. Cool. Make sure you use his name. It's yeah. the only name yeah. under heaven by which men can be saved. That's great. Well, uh, I really appreciate your time this week. I think we got some big news on the horizon for the podcast, but oh, we're really? gonna we're gonna really? save that. We got we got some big news. You got a, d- a Maybe different co-host week. for Steve? Is that what you're gonna do? <laughs> have, have I been voted <laughs> off the you, island? Have I been wrote, I thought I was voted <laughs> off the island. Vicky's the life of the party. <laughs> <laughs> we, vote, we had a vote. We didn't tell you. Yeah. Are you <laughs> guys ahead. tired of me talking? You want me out? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. No, I'm just riding your coattails. There you go. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. If you got any questions, want to get in touch with us, let us know how this uh, this podcast has affected you or, or anything like that. You we can send it. us an email, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll see you next week on The Uncommon Truth. Shout out to Michelle Ritter. Love you. Bye. Thanks for listening.